So, of course, give me a stable point, I will lift the earth, Atlas was supposed to say. <laughs> In uh, theory, we don't have a stable point, but we have time and space. And with this, uh, we can do something, we can really start to lift something and understand the amplitude and rates of different processes. The problem is that true science of sea level changes based on observational fact, long-term knowledge and physical laws has become gravely vulgarized by modeling in recent days. It's, this is how it is. Okay, <clears throat> main three factors controlling sea level for the future sea level. Okay, there are many controlling on the long term. Changing in the ocean water volume, that is glacial use. The ultimate frame, if you know what you are talking about, is 10 millimeter per year because that was the maximum rate you at the most uh, rapid melting of ice. Okay? So, for example, in Stockholm area, ice margin withdraw 300 meters per year, but at the same time it flow forward 500 meters. So the real melting was about seven to 800 meters per year. So it's an enormous melt. We had ice, we had enormous uh, climate forcing. We had, don't have the, anything like that now. It's the largest forcing that we had at the end of the Younger Dryas into the Holocene. And still, sea level, global sea level, didn't rise more than 10 millimeter per year. What does it tell you? What does it tell you? That no one can come and say that it will be more than one meter in the century. If they do that, there's something wrong with them. Okay, the other is a thermal expansion, the steric effect. The ultimate frame is about one, uh, five millimeter per year. Um, and uh, they give a short term heating. And they goes up and down. It's not unidirectional, it's going up and down. So it's, uh, and at shore, of course, it's, it's always zero because there's no water to expand there. And I will go back to that. And then the redistribution of the water, which is very, very important. It is going from one place to another. And I will try to show. These are the three variables. And we can handle them uh, with rates and amplitude. This is the glacial eustatic. It can never, ever be more than um, in amplitude meters in rate 10 millimeter per year. We have to be inside here. In the last 300 years, we have been in this uh, green box. One millimeter per year or uh, um, 10 centimeter per, per 100 years. That is nothing. And these are the observed, field observed, here somewhere. But those who are talking about things here, one meter, two meter, three meter, they are just wrong. It's against physics. It's against physics. It's against observational facts. You have to be. Um, the satellite altimetry is here somewhere, and we go back to that later. Next one, in this steric uh, heating, you have the water expansion and the water column. And many, the longer the column is, the more will it change. And this is the, this is the temperature change. Two uh, centigrade is very, very much on the uh, ocean surface. Of course it is. But look here, we go down, we, 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 earlier you thought it was up at 300 meters, but it's really up down to 700 meters, you heat it from above. And we are talking here about 10, 10 centimeters. If you go further, it doesn't matter because it's only the upper part which is made. So about 10 centimeters at the most uh, uh, in 100 years time it will be. But that goes up and down, so it's, it's not unidirectional. If you go to an area where the water depth is only 100 meters, three and a half centimeters, 10 meters, it is only three and a half millimeter. That's just nothing. And if you are at the coast, it is nothing. zero, <laughs> zero. And then some people say, but it's all going to flush into the coast. 
No, 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 no. Look at what, what has happened with an ocean surface. It's a dynamic surface. It's compensated. It's sitting there. That's why we have all this irregularity in the Earth. Both the geoidal one and the other is the dynamic one. This is a dynamic thing. It has been immediately compensated, so it's controlled by, by gravity. So, there are, uh, but here it's zero. So out here we have the basin volume changes, the water mass changes, the glacial use as a thermal expansion. Here it's of course much less. The thermal expansion is my here it is very it, there is no an, a thermal expansion. This is of course glacial use as a regional dynamic effects. Those are the largest one. The, the all kind of dynamic effect changes the coastline. Maria just talked about erosion and what they are doing with the coast, playing with the coast. Mass water movement, compaction and tectonics. I mean tectonics here, and then they go together. So these are the effects at the coast. Then we come to sea level rose during the last, uh, up to the about 6,000, see 14 years ago. You can see all curves, wherever you are and how different they are, they are all rising up to that. After about this period, they start to, to redistribute and that becomes a dominant factor of redistribution of water effect. And that's where it plays very hard with the changes in the rotation of the Earth. That's how I began seeing this, and in 1996 uh, I was for the first time able to see, ah, it has to be coupled with the um, um, solar wind effects. So this is the system of surface currents. I mean, the easiest one to, to change is, of course, the surface uh, the most important one, of course, the yellow, the Kuroshio and the Gulf Stream, because it takes hot water at the equator and brings it to, to the north. That changes the angular momentum directly. So any change in this way, it has to be compensated. So it is a compensation like that, constantly. OK, then we have the other one, east-west. And the other are consequences of that. Uh, changes in the Earth's rotation generate redistribution of water masses. Here is, this is thousands, uh, um, uh, thousand years ago, uh, 980, no, 1080, 911, 1200 AD. In the Tanzania, uh, Tanzania coast, it's there, and uh, here you have the Peruvian, it's, it should be a little bit. But when it was a high here, water masses pushed on here, it was a low in the Peruvian. 100 years or 60 years or whatever, we had a high here and a low here. It meant water masses were swashing back and forth in this direction. Okay? Then we come to something which is really nice and interesting, I think. Redistribution of water massing during solar maxima and solar minima. Uh, during the solar maxima, the, the Gulf Stream was directed all the way up here. We have higher sea level here. We have higher temperature because of the heat stored in, in, in the ocean water. In Indian Ocean, we had a low. When we had a high there, we had a low there. What? That start to be interesting. Then in uh, the solar minima, uh, the Gulf Stream turned this way, and Arctic water penetrated all the way down to Coimbra in Portugal. And it was a very cold period here, known as Little Ice Ages. And we had a lower sea level, for sure. In the Indian Ocean, at exactly the same time, we had high sea levels. We had high sea levels. Isn't that nice and interesting? So it is this, my books which are out there, I think it was the first time I really pinpointed those changes. So now I will take you on an excursion over the globe. I think we we'll begin here in the Indian Ocean. Seven sites and everything is open. There's no rice there in sea, in sea level. It's a stable. Plus or minus so. You have this Pacific sites, also zero. We go to 
uh, here in uh, uh, Suriname is also Syria. We go up to the North Sea area and Kattegat area, and th there you have those values. It's a little rise. And you go to Venice, which is another wonderful test area. It's zero. And if you go to American coast, we have to discuss that, because uh, they are messing up things there with acceleration. So this is the Indian Ocean. Uh, it, the, the Maldives, the Bangladesh, and the uh, Goa. Yeah, you can, first of all, you can see it's a remarkable coincidence, coincidence with these, these two, three curves. And high here during uh, the cold period in Europe, uh, low sea level here, we have peat formation, and here are salt kilns, kilns f found below sea level, and submerged harbor. And here we have a painting by the um, uh, Portuguese, which were living in Goa, of the high abundant um, um, harbor and the um, uh, new harbor with ships into, in it. And then comes a high level, and then uh, late, um, about um, 1960, fall in sea level. Fall in sea level here, and fall in sea level here. Here we got in 1970, and here we, we have. But it's, we will go through a couple of those things. But it's a very interesting record. So if you go to the, to the Maldives, this is what we will see. Look here, for example. It's erosion going on. And some people say, erosion, ah, it means sea level rise. No, sea level rise, erosion doesn't mean sea level rise. It means something has changed. Even more if it's lowering, because the equilibrium line is, has been coming into to the dynamics. And it's here. here, and look at the coast to this side. The, 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 the sand taken here, it's being displaced this way and down the old shore. It's there, it's a fossil shore, and it starts to be overgrown, it's abundant. That was the old one, and now we are here. We have another place, we have high uh, rock cat platform, and we have a, pig, a map from 1922 showing sea, uh, sea level in here. Now sea level is here, and it, this is the fall at about 1970. And then you, so you can see this one is, it's, it's operating, it is fresh, the other is weathered. And here we can say the high one, this one, uh, that one is this one, and the pr present. And we have the famous tree, which was staying there for 50 years, and I said, God, if sea level would have ri risen, it would be gone. And when I came there to shoot the movie, it was lying down, and I said, Ooh, I, say, I was wrong, because the scientist always thinks that. Somebody says, change their mind. I was Im immediately open to change my mind. But then the people having a little, uh, oh God, a little uh, cafeteria there, they said, no, no. I asked them, when was this taken? No, it was not taken. It was a group of Australian scientists which uh, pulled it down. We have Goa, the high 60s level, the low with a building below sea level, and then you have the first high level. You can see the material now being weathered. You have the old dead cliff overgrown here. This is the old dead cliff from just before 1960. Now, after 1960, the shore is here. And in the Mumbai the tide gauge, you can see a fall in sea level of 17 centimeter. Though we talked about the Pacific, if anybody could get a rise in sea level here in, in um, uh, um, uh, Mayuro and Kiribati and Tuvalu and Vanuatu, they're simply not there in the tide gauges, tide gauge record. So <coughs> we go to the Kattegat area. Here we know, we know the uplift rate with a, such a great detail, when better than a tenth of a meter and the tilt from the, and here we have the zero land. We have one, two, three, four, and a number of other tide gauges here. So look, Cochure is right at it. It should show a uh, real sea level, and the other. So what we do is, in all these places, we got plus 0.9 millimeter per year, nothing else. And those are the tide gates. I think I have to run on a little. But these are found. But everywhere where you get, it's 0.9. So that is the 
regional eustatic factor in the North Sea, in the, uh, in the Kattegat. In the, the North Sea region, we have Coxhaven, Amsterdam, Ilimeden, and Brest. Brest, we know that it's about zero. It's outside the four band. Amsterdam is in the four band, and it has 1.5 longer. But it was ended in 1930, so this continues the graph. And there you have a, a, about yes, uh, so and um, and the uplift factor. We know that since during eight thousand years, and by several different authors named somewhere here. And then you get the true eustatic factor at about 1.1. So this is the regional eustatic factor in the North Sea, for sure. And it's very close. If you go to Venice, we know Venice very well. Where first we have, um, uh, it's of course a subsiding area. But from 19, uh, 1730, we have a lot of information from camera obscura um, images, hundreds of them, and they, they gave the algae rim, so we could uh, t trace it back. Or, or it was, anyway. Okay, so there you get a 2.4 uh, millimeter relative subsidence, and the mean of the curve is uh, 2.3, so it's a component that means 0.1, which is just nothing. And after 1970, you can see it has even turned the other way around. Uh, in uh, uh, Suriname, we have a fa very nice picture. Here it's, of course, zero. The satellite altimetry gives three points. There is, there is a message in this mess. Uh, this is a long story about um, the American uh, East Coast. But what it shows, this is a fantastic um, regional eustatic curve. And here you can see what the other are doing. If the hockey stick is there, it doesn't fit the continuation of this. This one is what they claim it is. But you have to put that back here. And then it doesn't give, it's a false. So all the, ta all the station goes that there, but you have the satellite altimetry and IPCC is here, but all the other are here. But, and yes, and when we just su summarize it, everything is between uh, uh, 0, 0.0 and 1.0. There is the regional variability over the globe. You have to change the satellite altimetry because they were fiddling with it. Here, the first original data was here. Three years later, they pushed it up. And if you ask me, I can tell you how, why they do it. The GRACE analysis of, uh, of um, gravity showed a trend here. So we can know that it's going back. If we, if we tilt it back, it gets a factor of 0.45 millimeter per year. And that is the NOAA data. If you have uh, um, University of Colorado, uh, it gets 0.65. So satellite altimetry is about 0.5 plus or minus uh, <coughs> 0.05. So now it uh, makes very much sense. If you take all the tide gauges we have here, 180 long term, this is the factor. These are the satellite ideas. And way up here is. So when I get to, these are the observed and predicted values, and the models are going here. So why should we accept models which are so exceptionally much? OK, next one. OK, this is a long-term trend. And we can see here if it's cooling, if we have to go there. But OK, just next one. Help me with the next up. Oh. So if we say in the future, possi possible changes, not more than that, not less than that, May, not likely that, not likely that, possible here, um, probable here. So we get plus 20 and minus uh, this is the thing. So the conclusion is here. Thank you very, very much.